yoga with us. Hello, Angela. Hello, Akshata. How are you? It's so glad to be with you. We finally go face to face. Absolutely. I'm super excited to have this live session with you and have this heart to heart talk. Yes, absolutely. I've, I've been waiting for this. I even told my husband last night, he says, you're, he said, you're restless. I said, no, I said, I'm not going to sleep. I said, I can't wait for this today. So I'm very excited to be here. And we're very excited to have you part of Miss International World, uh, to be Miss International World India, to be our director. And also congratulations on being the CEO for the International Glamour uh, Project, because that is just so very, very important right now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Angela. It means a lot to me. Uh, it's about 7.30 p.m. in India now, and uh, we had the cyclone pass by without too much damage, I would say. So uh, we're all safe here in India. And, uh, <laughs> I, and I think um, about 30 to 40 people have already joined in, and uh, they're still joining in. So I think in the next five minutes, uh, we'll start taking all the questions well our contestants had to um, you know they've sent us like almost 55 to 60 odd questions and my team had to uh, uh, you know sift through the entire uh, array of questions and then uh, we are so excited to discuss all those topics with you so before we start with the questions let me just uh, go ahead and uh, introduce our special guest for this live session which is you give me the honor so uh, all you guys who are watching us thank you for joining in i can see more and more people are joining in we have with us uh, the ceo of miss international world uh, angela posilico live from miami florida united states here and we're super excited to have this dynamic woman a leader in her own right and i absolutely adore you for all that you do in your life thank you so much angela Oh, no, thank you. This is a, a wonderful opportunity. I'm so glad to be partnering with you. You are you are a big inspiration to me. Every time you do something, I said, oh, wait a minute. I said, I got to get on the ball and do <laughs> do something different. So you've been a, a, a great inspiration and, and we're just we're just so honored to have you. I think what you're doing in the world of pageantry is absolutely amazing. You are showing the world that there are so many women out there that are not only beautiful, but highly intelligent. And with the way things are going in the world today, I think that pageantry can truly make a difference. And girl power, women power, I, you know, more power to you. I think you've been absolutely amazing. Oh, thank you so much. That really, really made my day. That really did. <laughs> Thank you. So, Angela, uh, before we start with the questions, uh, we want to know about your journey because I believe you've uh, uh, you've been in the music industry, you've been in the cosmetic industry, you've been in the pageant industry. You've done so much yourself in your entire lifetime. So, just take us through the entire journey. <laughs> okay, let me see if I can give you the Reader's Digest version, see if I can make a, a long story short. Uh, you are correct. That is my main profession is being a, uh, a singer. Um, and you know, I did get a scholarship to the Juilliard Academy of Music. I graduated there with a master's degree and operatic studies, but you know, while you're going to school, you know, you still have to work and support yourself. So I went into the cosmetic industry and luckily for me, uh, New York city was my playground. I mean, I, I lived in Bergen County, New Jersey, where I grew up all my life, but I was like 10, 15 minutes from New York city. So it was just, uh, and going to school over there, everything was like a hop, skip and a jump. So I started working for the cosmetic industry and I worked for Lancome for like 12 years. I was in the, the industry for 27 years, but for Lancome for 12 of those years. And I was their trainer and I worked in such top doors like uh, Bon Wittella, Bergdorf Goodman, Andre Bendels. And I used to have a lot of women in the, in the world of pageantry that used to come to me and say, I, I need a makeover. I need a lot of help. And I used to look at them with like two heads because these women were absolutely gorgeous. And I was like, what help do you women need? But, you know, I would do their makeup or I would suggest products that they could use. And a lot of them started inviting me to their state pageants and national pageants. And one state pageant that I went to and I did a makeup on the girl, she actually won. And she went on to the national pageant in Las Vegas. Now, what happened out there was the, I was only supposed to do her makeup, 
but the makeup artist that they hired and they actually gave him a plane ticket, he wound up taking off someplace else. Oh. So they said, they said to me, we've got 50 contestants here waiting to have makeup. What can we do? And I said, well, it's going to be impossible for me to get all 50 contestants done in a short period of time. I said, but let me see what I could do. So I called up one of my directors in Las Vegas. Uh, I was working for Lancome at the time. And I said, look, I need a team here. I said, I know that there's, I don't know if you're going to get paid. I said, but I think the contestants will actually, you know, tip or do something individual. And I must have brought in about 25 makeup artists and kind of saved the day there. Then when I got back uh, to Jersey, they asked me to do makeup for the Miss American Petite pageant. And I brought my team in there. And then what happened that day, and it just seemed so funny that the entertainer they hired did not show up. <laughs> Went off the parts unknown. <laughs> Wow. So somebody, somebody in the back room got this crazy idea and said, well, Angela sings. And I said, well, wait a minute. I said, I'm not even dressed to be on stage today. You know, I had my clothes on to doing makeup. Luckily for me, I had my tapes in the car. You know, back then they were using tapes. So I said, all right. I said, let me go out there. I said, and let me, uh, let me perform to help them out. So I went out and I performed. And while I was, was out there, uh, there was a woman by the name of Lynn Razowitz, who was the director for the Mrs. New Jersey International Pageant. She turns around and says to my husband, who became a judge that day, she says, oh my God, I got to have her perform. She says, I have to have her perform my pageant. So now from doing makeup, I started performing at pageants. And that's when the Mrs. Globe organization, which is owned by Tracy Kemble, right. uh, that started to come about. And I competed in Mrs. New Jersey Globe, and I won that in 1996. Wow. And then I went on to nationals, and I made the top 10. Well, every year at Tracy's National Pageant, she always does something which is called the Globe Awards. And she wanted me to sing. Now, Tracy knew I could sing, but didn't know how I could sing. So while we were out in California, she held these auditions, and I think I got two notes out, and she said, stop right there. She said, oh, my God. She said, it's amazing. And she made, she made me sing for the Globe Awards. And for five years straight, I opened up her awards. Nobody else could sing. Lovely. And I have, to, I have to admit, when I was with Tracy, she did more for me than any talent uh, organization could have ever done, agency. She opened up my career. And I was singing literally around the world. I went to sing in Greece. Uh, I performed in Phantom of the Opera. I, I would have to say the time I was with her, it just, it just opened up a, a, a whole new world for me. And then when I moved to Florida, because my husband got transferred to Florida from his job, the Globe organization had a director, because I was their director for five years up in Jersey, and they had a director here, and I was going to work with their director. But then I just was looking around and I said, you know what? The Latin market was so very big in Florida. Right. And a lot of these, a lot of these Latin pageants, uh, they didn't have anything that could cross over to the American market. And at the same time, they weren't doing a scholarship program. So I decided to start my own pageant. That's when I started first with Miss Latina International and it became right. very popular. And people said to me, they said, you know what? I want to get involved with this organization because they saw we were doing a scholarship program. They saw that we were getting involved with celebrities and doing red carpet events. And I said, you know what? I have to open this up. And that's when we started the world organization. And that became so popular that as now it's actually been overriding the Latina division, which became our roots. So it's been very successful. We started the pageant back in 2003 Look how many years we've been going. So that's my entire story on how I got involved with pageants. But I did leave one thing out. Uh, in New Jersey, they had a contest which was called the Greatest Legs of New Jersey. And that was a fundraiser for the Jerry Lewis Telethon to raise funds for muscular dystrophy. I competed there. The third time I actually won that pageant and went out to Las Vegas and, and was on national television for the Jerry Lewis Telethon. So that's my entire entree into pageants, how I got started through makeup, becoming a director, and then becoming an owner. Wow, with oodles of experience coming out of that long story cut short, 
now we know why you're the perfect leader in the right sense and leading pageantry with Miss International World. Well, you know, it, it did give me a lot of experience, but it gave me a chance to grow too, because I've, one of the things that I've always realized in my life that it's never really about me. It's about the people that are around me. And they always say, if you surround yourself with good people, you're going to grow. And one of the things I think I'm very proud about is that my organization has empowered a lot of women. I've had so many women that have gone on to amazing things. I mean, I've had one girl that went on to start her own television station. I had another girl that became a doctor. Um, I would say my best example, and I, I think you know what I'm going to say, is Susmita Patel. Yeah. Unbelie oh, yes. Unbelievable. I mean, she started with me as uh, Miss India, won the title of Miss International World United States, then went on to take the second highest title, which was the Globus title in the organization. And from there, she started her own company. She has worked with models. She's became uh, my official pageant coordinator. She was also the coordinator of the, uh, the cricket games, which when she did that, and she did the talent and the modeling for that, she got 1.5 million viewers on YouTube. That's amazing. Wow. And That's I don't know how she did it. I mean, I... All right, I work on my pageant all year, and I do a three-day event. She did a five-day event. I, I would have had a second heart attack with that. But she's been absolutely amazing. Uh, she's been very inspirational. So I would have to say I have a lot of success stories, but to date, she's probably my biggest success story because look, look at where she can. And literally, she did not want to get involved with the pageant. She kept telling me, no, no, no. And I said to her, I said, I have a feeling about you. I said, I think you're going to be absolutely amazing. And sure enough, she right. got into this and her career has just skyrocketed. And if I took myself out of the equation, that girl could just go on today, uh, even, even if I wasn't around. She's got enough of stamina, enough steam. She really knows what she's doing. So I'm, I'm very proud of that. And there's been so many success stories like that. Lovely, lovely. And it's also So because of the opportunities that you have given all these girls, including Susmita, the kind of exposure that you've given to them, the kind of confidence that you've built inside them, I think it's that that leads them on to take on these different paths where you said that Susmita did not even feel that uh, she was cut for pageantry and look where she is now. So all thanks well, to it's well, no, and I have to turn that around and say thanks to you because ever since you and I have partnered together, a lot of my girls have seen this and a lot of contestants. So you've been very inspirational to a lot of these girls because they see what you can do and they look up to you. I mean, I have I have women and, and girls that say to me, oh, my God, I love Akshata. She's beautiful. Uh, I mean, I have a very good friend out of, of mine out in California uh, by the name of Alejandro Sanginas, who's with NBC. And anytime you and I do something, I mean, he's like right there. He said, she's a great inspiration. He said, even to me. So you have not only, you have not only bridged the pageantry world, but you have extended yourself even into the world of entertainment. So anytime you put something up, my people come in. So I think truthfully, you are going to take pageantry to another level. I think you're going to take it far beyond what I'm even able to do. Oh, no, no, that, that really means a lot to me. And I'm really grateful to all the support, to all the encouragement that you keep giving me, seriously. No, and you've given us a lot of support. So, you know, it's, it works both ways. And like I said, it, it, it's not about me. It's about the people that are with me and how I can inspire them. And then in turn, they will re-inspire me. So, and I think right now with everything that's going on in the world, you have been such a bright light. So keep going, keep doing what you're doing. And you know what? The final results are just going to be amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, taking the session ahead, Angela, I have like a huge list of questions laid out for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I hope I'm not going to bother you too much. <laughs> but then Oh, no, I love it. I love it. Okay, great. So uh, uh, the first question is uh, from somebody who's in the Miss uh, category. And she says, how does pageantry really help? an individual group. I know you've uh, uh, 
uh, uh, chanced upon this uh, a little earlier in our conversation. But if you could just answer this question of hers. How does pageantry really help an individual group? Well, let me give you a prime example that someone actually had given to me. And I'll go back to the uh, uh, Mrs. Globe pageant. Um, our, uh, there was uh, Mrs. Globe, Mrs. U.S. Globe 2017, uh, Dawn Foley, uh, who's had a, an amazing career in and out of pageantry. She had uh, given us an example, and she said how pageantry actually helped her. She went to apply for a job. And on a resume, you know, you can have a, a resume as far as your work experience, but they also look at a functional resume to see other things that you've done, to see if you've been in the Olympics or you've worked with charities or whatever groups you've worked with. And she had put on there that she was uh, Mrs. U.S. Globe um, 1997. Okay. And when she got called in for the job, they looked at her and they said, oh, my God. They said, you were Mrs. U.S. Globe? And she said, yes. Yeah. She said, I also went on to compete at, uh, you know, Mrs. Globe in Greece. And she said, I got the job. And she's been on that job. I, I can't begin to tell you how many years. And she made a very good point on that. She said, if I did not put that title on there, she said, they may have hired me, but I, she said, they may not. She said, but just the fact that I had that on my resume proved to them that I could think out of the box. So, uh, going into pageantry, a lot of women d don't understand that it's a, it is a career, okay? Right. And so many people get misconstrued, and I have to tell this to people all the time. People think that, oh, you know what, these pageant girls are just going to parade on stage looking beautiful in a bathing suit and in a gown, and that is not the case because it is a career. And they always say, what you do in life is going to echo uh, through eternity and by having that on your resume does show uh, whether you want to get into politics or you want to uh, you know whatever you want to do in life it's on there so that's going to really be very highly favorable so that's why i encourage everyone to get involved don't be afraid to put it on your resume because no matter what door you want to go in it's going to open that door for you lovely that that's such a lovely way of looking at pageantry in itself it's just not one event it's just not uh, the parade that you do in a swimsuit or a gown. It's much more than just the crown and sash that you're going to be wearing. It, 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 exactly. And as long as you wear that crown in your heart, and as I always tell my girls, you know, what, that's one thing I've done, and I did learn this from the Globe Pageant as well. I don't put years on my banner. And the reason why I do that is because I tell them, what's Miss International World? Always Miss International World. The title never Absolutely. goes away. Because Absolutely. if... You know, I've had times where Galia has not been able to make it, and I've called up Kelsey and say, "Hey, Kelsey, you want to get? You know, you want to come in? You want to go? Um, you know, do this event? Oh, absolutely! Puts that crown and banner on, and there she is. And a lot of times, people don't even know without putting a year on the banner who's the current Miss International World and who's not the current Miss International World. So that's the reason why I do that. And I feel, you know what? They will crown another successor. But that title is there for life. It's 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 with them. So that's the reason why we do not put years on the banners. Lovely. That's that's lovely. It's it's a title that you uh, get to keep for life with you. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, you know, even with Miss Universe, a lot of times when you see and they they bring back, they have a reunion, they bring back those women. Those women have gone on to do things. And what I didn't know is they are kept. Uh, even after their title is over, they're still kept on a contract for two years because there's things that they've done during their titles that take time to come to fruition. And they can actually call them back within a five-year period to still make appearances. So that's one of the practices that we follow as well, too. Right, right, right. Lovely. So you, you also answered what is the true essence of pageantry in this uh, this answer that you gave because that was going to be my next question so yes this is the true essence of pageantry where it gives you just more than the crown and the sash more than a title plus the title remains with you for a longer period of time you can uh, give uh, value to the deeds that you're doing your actions the the drives that you are taking uh, forward the causes that you're working for you can work towards them for a longer period of time with your kind of practice Exactly. And, and you, you hit the nail on the head. That is the essence of pageantry. And, right. you know, it's it's just not about, as I've always told everyone, it's just not going out on a red carpet and doing an event. It's really all about 
how you carry that title within you and going out and doing community service. I have girls that have gone out and done food drives. Like for an example, what happened last year when the hurricane hit and it hit the Bahamas. And of course, Bahama Paradise Cruise Line being the direct line to the Bahamas because that's where they go. And I, this was a funny thing. I actually got a hold of the CEO about four o'clock in the morning and I said, O'Neill, I'm watching the news. I said, we are in trouble. And he said to me, I know. He said, but we're going to come up with a plan. And I went out on social media and I must have called in every marker that I could possibly think of. And I told everybody, I said, look, I said, this is my bloodline, Bahama Paradise Cruise Line. I said, they have been with me. They have sponsored me. This is the fourth year that we're going back to doing the pageant. I said, they're going to need help. I said, those people in the Bahamas, we're going to need supplies. We're going to have to get them food. We're going to have to get them clothing. Each one of my girls stepped up. I can't begin to tell you. And I had designers, people that own baby clothes factories. I mean, I must have brought five boxes of brand new children's clothes to the dock that the ship carried over to the Bahamas. Every girl stepped up, every one of my sponsors, every one of my supporters. So I was very proud of that. I mean, that was a great time for my organization that we really showed that when people were in need, we were there and rightful and rightfully so. You know, and again, uh, even with COVID-19, uh, I've got people that are, are, are stepping up to the plate. And uh, I have partnered once again with Bahama Paradise Cruise Line that we are doing the Folding at Home Project. Uh, but we are, this year, our program book and everything that we're doing is going to go, the proceeds are going to go towards helping to find a vaccine or a cure. And I was very proud of that because so many people um, have come to my aid on that. And I think we're starting to make a lot of progress. I think by 2021, we're going to have this under control, uh, even the end of this year. I think everything is going to be under control. I think there's going to be a vaccine. I think there's going to be a cure. I'm, I'm on a lot of these task force. And I'll tell you, the future is starting to look very bright. So I think we hang in there a little bit more. Sun's going to shine all the way. Wow. That's a lot of positivity coming from you. <laughs> lovely. That's absolutely lovely. My husband, Dr. Swaroop, has just joined in and he says a hi to you. So hi, Angela from Swaroop. Oh, tell him I said hi. Yes. Oh, he can watch you live. You can give him a message. <laughs> oh, he's a great guy. I love him. My husband loves him. You know, he's very inspirational. When I see him out there doing his thing, I said, okay, now I got to get off my butt and do an hour exercise class. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. He also keeps giving me that uh, positive energy that I need whenever I feel down. I don't want to work out. He's the one who actually makes his eyes really big and says, go to your gym, go work out. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, I, exactly. I mean, uh, even when we were on, uh, you know, we're starting to come out of it now slowly, but we were on that big lockdown a few weeks ago. One of the things that I love, and I have to, to mention this, and we are hoping to get them to perform at the pageant if their schedule permits. Uh, anybody watches Dancing with the Stars, Max and his brother Val, who are world-renowned dancers, uh, yeah. Max and his wife gave 10 weeks of what they call quarantine workout. It was yeah. amazing. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on Instagram. I mean, I must have taken every class that they had. And it was so, yeah, and it was so inspirational. It was absolutely amazing. So, you know, uh, again, I, you know, even in a downtime, you can find things that can help you and be very inspirational. And I used to share it all over, uh, you know, my social media. And I used to tell the girls, look, if you want to do a workout and can't get into the gym, here you go. You can still keep your workout. And at the same time, it was great for the mind, great for the soul. And uh, they temporarily have stopped it, but they're going to come back right. with something bigger and better. But they have left all their videos up on their YouTube and up on their Instagram that anybody wants to continue, you can still continue. But I think in the next week or so, they're going to come back with something even more exciting than what they did. So we got to watch out for that. Lovely. That's lovely. So coming back to talk about the Miss International World Organization. So as a CEO, uh, what are the qualities that you're looking for when you're looking at someone who's going to represent your brand, the queen? That's an easy question. If everybody's looking at you right now, that's the qualities. And as I mentioned, as I mentioned, even uh, somebody like a Susmita, I mean, you know, I feel that 
it's women, it's not enough to be beautiful on the outside, but to be beautiful on the inside. And the qualities that I look for is what is that girl going to do? Or what is that person going to do with the title? Uh, you know, again, uh, I remember something Tracy once said to me, she said, you know, Angela, she said, you can, you, you're going to get a lot of beautiful women that are going to cross your path. They're going to be absolutely stunning, but what are they going to do with the title? How are they going to use their beauty to work with that title? So it's just not enough to have the looks on the outside, but you got to have it on the inside. And that's the qualities that I look for all the way around. Not only gorgeous, but someone who's going to get out there and really promote that title. And even during a down time, uh, you know, we have not been able to physically get out and do all the big events that we're used to doing. But, you know, just sitting here with you, and I've done a lot of FaceTime. I have another FaceTime tonight. I've also been on the radio station every Wednesday night with um, Mimi Mala from Peace on the Street, uh, Jennifer Rosario. We also did something with Florida National News. So that's the qualities that I look for. Who is going to take it to the next level? And I can almost tell right from the beginning when someone joins uh, just where I think they're going to go with that. You know, and when we have our actual pageant, I never get involved with the judge's decision. That's something I try to stay away from. But I do tell my judges, look, use good sense. Have a sense of a feel for who you think is not only going to look gorgeous out there, but what are they going to do with that title going forward? What level are they going to take it? Because it's not only for the organization, but for themselves. If they right. take it to the next level, their careers are going to blossom no matter what they're going to do. And going back to the fact that if they do it right and it's on their resume, the whole world is at their feet. The whole world is at their feet. Absolutely. Very well said. Very well said. So now moving on, can you tell us about your prestigious tie-ups and associations with Miami Fashion Week, Miami Swim Week, the Winterfest Boat Parade, the Asian Trade Show? Can you tell us something about them? Well, yeah, that's been really great for us because I did get involved with a wonderful woman by the name of Amy Dolly, uh, who owns John Casablanca Modeling uh, uh, Agency and School down in Doral. Now, a lot of people get very misconstrued when they hear, oh my God, John Casablanca, I'm going to have to spend a lot of money for training. But Amy also has a modeling agency. She has MTM Model Management. And she's been very right. good to my girls because she felt that they were pros. So she said, I'm not going to put them through the school. They can model for me. She had the model in Swim Week. She had the model in Miami International Fashion Week. And that's a big wow. plus for us because our women know that, oh my God, if I get involved with Miss International World, I'm going to be in Miami Swim Week. I'm going to be in uh, Miami Fashion Week. And there's right. been a lot of fashion shows where I've not had to send them for auditions just because of the caliber and what they do. They've gotten in. So that is a very, very big plus for us. And I have to give a big shout out to Amy Dolly because she has been amazing. I mean, look at Gelia. I think every modeling agency in the world is after Gelia. Uh, and now she is going for the cover of Maxim Magazine. Wow. So we're very proud of that. Yeah. So our title has led us to a lot of amazing things. It's open doors where most of these girls can knock it in. And going back to title, that is something that Amy from John Casablanca and MTM uh, has stipulated. She said, look, she no. told the girls, she's the first thing that should be on that resume, Miss International World, Miss Latina, Miss International World Global. She said, because other companies look at that. And when they look at that, that's going to open the door to some of those big fashion shows. Right. That title really matters. Yeah, it does. It really matters. So the title should be used because, you know, a lot of women think that, oh, my God, if I go in there with their title, they're going to think I'm a pageant girl and I'm not a model. No, believe it or not, that title is going to open up doors for you to get into these major shows. A lot of times they'll just select you, okay, right. without right. you even right. going through a lot of the hoops that some of the other girls do. I mean, you may still have to go, you know, to cast, yeah, you but... You have to work on yourself, yeah. But the, the exactly. Doors, you're giving them the doors, the opportunities. And what right. happens to well, them is, is up to them. And if, if they're going to give their more than 100%, they'll definitely nail it. And a lot of times I do have to tell my girls, because this has happened to me. You know, if I send one of the contestants and they get in and maybe Miss International World doesn't get in, uh, you know, there's, there's a little bit of hard feelings. And I said, look, when you go for a casting, 
I'm not the designer. I'm not the one selecting. They know what they're looking for and who they're looking for. You know, it's even happened to me when I went for auditions. I mean, I know I can sing, but maybe that director wasn't looking for my type of voice. So I had to turn around and say to myself, I can't be insulted by this. I'm just not what he's looking for. Then at times I'd go to auditions where I get two notes out and I say, that's it. You got the job. So you have to be very cognizant of that. But just the fact that, that you walk in with a title, they're going to look at you more favorably than when you didn't, if you didn't have a title. Yes, they're definitely going to look at you with very, very favorable eyes. And with that title on your resume, it's definitely going to take you far. Exactly. So uh, that's why I highly say that, you know, when you, when you go into these things, go in with an open mind, smile, promote yourself, and you'd be surprised. Uh, like I always say, there's a, a lot of light at the end of that rainbow. Right. So we had uh, Zoe Pagnus from the Miss category who had said that she aspires to walk in the Miami Fashion Week and she believes that the Miss International World pageant can get her close to this dream of hers. And you have guided her absolutely very well. Thank you. Thank you for that. Oh, great. No, I listen, that's what we're here for. If we can help. And yes, just being with us can get you into a lot of, <laughs> you know, a lot of, we, we, like I always say, we open the door. Once you get through the door, a lot of it has to do with you, but we have the, you know, we have the opportunity to open that door for you. And hopefully once we open the door, it will go even further. Right, right. So um, can you tell us about the other various careers that your queens have chosen or gone on to pursue after winning the titles? Um, could you repeat that again? Because it didn't come through quite clear. Okay. I said that, could you tell us about the various careers that your queens have chosen after you've crowned them with the winning titles? Oh, like I said before, they've gone on to many careers. I mean, look at Galia going on to be a professional, uh, a, a model. Uh, we've one of them from being in the pageant and she always wanted to do this. She became, uh, a, a, a psychologist. And from that, she actually went to work, believe it or not, now this could be a little scary, but she did this very well. She went to work in the jails and tried to find out why criminals do what they do. And from that, she is now in the military. She's going oh. into the army. She's like, Cap she's Captain Reinhardt now. Oh. So she is going into the United States military. And uh, I know that in July, I believe she will she will be able to tell us where she's going to be stationed. But that is absolutely amazing because she's a doctor. She's now in the military. She's a captain. At a very young age, she's going to be able to retire with a pension and start any business that she wants to, to create. So that is amazing. Uh, I would have to say um, our girl, that uh, Silvana Camargo, okay, who was Miss Latina International going back in 08 and 09, she went to work for Telemundo and now has her own television station called Canastillo. And she wow. has interviewed celebrities from around the world. She's even gone to the Academy Awards. She's gone to the Cannes Film Festival. She's been absolutely amazing. Jennifer wow. Rosario, who was our first Miss International World, who's the vice president now of Florida National News. I mean, look wow. where she's taken her career. If you go into Disney World and you're going to buy your ticket, you're standing online. You're going to see a national commercial come up with Jennifer. And wow. I was there 4th of July. People didn't know why I was screaming. I said, oh, my God, this international world just came up on Disney World. And it flashed throughout the whole park on this big screen. And Amazing. when I screamed and everybody around me was saying, oh, my God, is there something going on? Do we have to get out? I said, no. I said, that's my girl up there on the screen. And then everybody realized what I was talking about. And before I know it, I was signing autographs that day because everybody thought I was a celebrity. But that's the careers that these girls have gone on. Amazing. And like I said, we open the doors. You have to be willing to take it to another right. level. But these are the type of careers that these women can go on to. So I'm very proud of that. Right, right. From modeling to military to television to entrepreneurship and business, all of it. They've, they've gone on to take different paths. Wow, that's brilliant. Well, well, well even, uh, you know, for an example, even myself, like I, I said before, you know, yeah. I had the distinct pleasure 
of meeting Max and his brother from Dancing with the Stars because they own a studio here in Boca Raton, became very friendly with Max. And I also had the distinct opportunity of studying in two of his classes while he's here. So that opened up a door for me. Look at Tito Puente Jr. I have been friends with Tito. I, well, I knew Tito's dad way back in the day in New York. And I became friends with Tito. And now I have something very exciting to say that Tito has partnered with the actor James Olmos, which they're going to be doing a story on his father. That's going to be a Hollywood movie. Okay. Wow. And that's, that's, that's brilliant. And so, I saw a social media post. It's amazing. Yeah. That all of us are going to be involved with that. And, you know, we, Molina Almadova, who sings with Tito, is also, you know, part of this. So look at the celebrities that were surrounded. And that is an open door for any contestant that gets involved with us because now I can turn around and say, hey, you want to take a class with Max? I can set it up. So now they can put on their resume, hey, I studied right. with the great Max from Dancing with the Stars. Right, so right. it's another, just another door that will open up for them. Right, right. For all our viewers, Dancing with the Stars is the American version of what Jhalak, Jhalak Diklaja is, uh, whatever's there in our India, in our country. So it's called Jhalak Diklaja in India, and it's called Dancing with Stars in the U.S. In the U.S., exactly. Oh, yeah, they're around the world. I mean, they call it something different in Nigeria. They call it something different in England. But it all ties in with Dancing with the Stars. So uh, um, I'm going to be anxious to see who they're going to put on uh, coming up in September. Lovely. That's lovely. My next question is, um, it's from a pageant aspirant. Uh, she says, I want to understand how do I use my participation into a pageant like this as a springboard for my fashion or modeling career? I think you've answered most of it, most of this question. So I think I yeah, definitely, you definitely use it as a springboard because, uh, it, you know, a lot of people think that pageantry and modeling are so different. It really isn't. Okay. And I think that the Miss Universe pageant show that in the last several years, that when you watch the girls on the runway, they've done it more modeling than they've actually done a pageantry walk. So it very much will springboard uh, into the career of, of, of modeling. And, and again, like I said, use that title because that title is just going to open up doors. You want to get into modeling. And I encourage any girls that if they have an opportunity to even get into the Miss Universe pageant, I've had a few of my girls that have gotten in there. That's really going to springboard. Look at, uh, Vanessa Gamoye. Vanessa right. Gamoye, who was my former Miss International World, now is our Miss, Inter, uh, Miss Intermodella World. She right. was uh, in the Miss uh, Peru Universe pageant. And she made the right. top 15 there. And that really skyrocketed her career. Okay. Wow. Uh, like she said, I may not have won, but at least I had a phenomenal opportunity. So that's another thing that she could put on her resume. You know, hey, I was top 15 in the Miss Universe Peru pageant. So right. I, it definitely is going to, and her modeling career has just excelled. So I encourage any girl that's in the world of pageantry, yes, it will definitely springboard your career into modeling. Lovely. So here's a specific question from Shrishti, who is in the Mrs. category. Uh, she says, I'm a government certified children and women's skill development coach in India. Also, I aspire to be glamorous. Uh, could you suggest a roadmap and what opportunities can pageantry open up for me? You know, that's a very good question. And as a matter of fact, if she's involved with government, the world of pageantry has actually opened doors for me. Um, I'm going to go back now to huh, showing my age. In 1996, when, of course, we had President Bill Clinton here, and Bill Clinton was campaigning for his second term in office, and I had the title of Mrs. New Jersey Globe. I actually went out and campaigned for him. And it jump-started a lot of things that I wanted to do. I right. got into government. And I was very lucky to get on Air Force One. I was very lucky to get into the White House. So yeah. even right now, um, when we had our governor's race, and I, former mayor uh, Philip Levine of Miami was running, I was on his campaign. And I have to admit that Governor now, Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida, 
has recognized our pageant as being the premier pageant here in Florida, along with Bahama Paradise Cruise Line. So if you are in government and you, you want to, and you're in the world of pageantry, it does open a lot of doors. It's great for photo ops. And if you want to get involved as far as community events, and I mean, I never tell anybody, you know, how to vote, what side they want to go on. But that's going to, that's where you're showing community service and making a difference. I mean, so Smita and I have both been a lot on a lot of campaigns. I mean, we're, we have a, a presidential race going this year here in the United States. I've been asked to work with the Joe Biden campaign. So yes, the two can go together. And again, opens a lot of doors. Definitely. I highly recommend it. Lovely. Thank you. I think, Sister, you have your answer there. Shifty has one more question and this is going to take you back to your uh, days of singing and music on stage. She says that though I am from an academic background, I possess a talent that not many know. I can sing and perform on stage simultaneously the rock star style. Do you think winning this pageant title can launch my rock star singing career? Absolutely. Oh my God, yes. I mean, coming from that industry, I'll be honest with you, I haven't really been on stage for a long time, but now that I'm back, uh, you know, doing a lot of the things and in the world, I'm getting asked to sing again. And I mean, if she is a singer, she wants to launch her career, she could do something on YouTube. Uh, I, I've seen a lot of that going on. So that is definitely, that is definitely going to open a door, especially with a title and you're a singer. I know when I had the title of Mrs. New Jersey Globe, as I said, that was definitely a springboard for me and singing for the Globe Awards. I mean, Tracy just opened up a tremendous door for me and being able to sing around the world. So yes, absolutely. Having that title and wanting to get back in the entertainment industry, they go hand in hand. I highly recommend it and say more power to you. And definitely at the same time, while you've got the title, you know, let people know that you sing, do something on YouTube, put something out. Let people know that you've got that talent and how you want to use that talent. Wow. So, Shishti, here's some golden advice from Angela. Let people know that you have the talent. <laughs> okay. Don't be shy on that. Let people know you have a talent because if you don't let people know, they're not going to think, you know, that you, they're never going to know that you have a talent. See, sometimes you have to do it in a subtle way, but don't be shy about it either. Right, right. The next um, question is from Dr. Anupama. She says, uh, how can I make a career out of pageantry even if I don't win the main title? And that's also another very good question. Here's a prime example. Look at Gal Gadot who plays Wonder Woman. She was in the Miss Universe pageant as Miss Universe uh, Israel. She did not win. But look at the career that that woman has. She went on to Hollywood. All right, the fact she was in Miss Universe also did help her, but any pageant right. can help her because she pursued right. it. And now, look at her. She's got a fabulous career. I mean, she plays Wonder Woman. She's been in the Avengers. She had her own movie called Wonder Woman. She's going to be doing Wonder Woman 2. So, absolutely. I mean, that she is a prime example. And that was a very good question of trying to break into uh, the entertainment industry. Absolutely. And I have another very dear friend of mine uh, that works for Miami Model uh, and, and Talent. And she has taken a lot of my girls and has given them parts in movies. So there's, there's a lot of opportunity in the world of pageantry and entertainment. And like I said, Gal Gadot, prime example. Right, right. Amazing. So, so just your participation itself is going to give you that kind of exposure and give you that kind of uh, those kind of opportunities. Sometimes just winning the main title is not the only thing. The process, the journey, that itself helps you so much. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, there's so many women in Hollywood uh, that, you know, that have won titles or even gone on. And it, it's, it's a shame because Phyllis George was a former Miss America who unfortunately passed away from a, a blood disorder uh, just recently. She was the anchor for uh, CBS, okay? Right, so right. a lot of these women have gone on, have had fab, I mean, have, have had fabulous uh, 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 careers. I mean, you've had a lot of the women that have played the Bond girls that were in pageants and went on to pl play in the James Bond movies. So it is definitely, there's a connection there between the world of pageantry and the world of entertainment. Right. Great. 
so my next question is uh, what are the various opportunities for a married woman after winning the crown especially after crossing a certain age or becoming a little mature is there any age limit if we want to move ahead in pageantry in future what are the avenues you know right now in the world of pageantry there isn't any age limit i mean we have the miss classic the, the mrs classic which is 31 and over but that's also a good question and i'll give you a prime example in the state of new jersey and i performed at that pageant i didn't even know about it they had the miss senior america for women that were 65 and over when i went to that pageant i thought my husband and i literally were going to fall through the floor these women were gorgeous at 65. When they right. came out in these bathing suits, I I'll tell you, it was unbelievable. And their national pageant went to Las Vegas, and they were invited to the White House. Many of them got uh, extras in movies. So regardless of what age you are, there are pageants, and it is still going strong today. The Miss Senior right. America pageant, it's now gone international. So don't right. be afraid at a certain age saying, oh my God, this is over. No, it definitely isn't. There are more pageants out there for senior American women and women right. even in middle age and that are right. skyrocketing their careers. So if you think that, oh my God, I'm 27, it's over. I mean, I know Miss Universe and Miss America, they cap off, but you right. can continue going on and don't be afraid if you get in your 50s and your 60s because there's still pageants out there and they're highly, highly recognized. So right. I would tell any woman, no matter what age you are, research it, but there's definitely a pageant out there for you. Right, so no matter what age you are, you still have hope and pageantry can take you a really long way from there. Oh, a really long way. As I said, when I went to Miss Senior America, I couldn't believe how beautiful these women were, how intelligent they were, and their careers were skyrocketing, and it's still doing that today. So never be afraid. You know, women are beautiful at, at, at any age. And, I mean, if you've got the guts and you've got the stamina, I don't care if you live to be 100 years old, take it as far as you can go. Right. So we have a live question popping up from one of our uh, viewers. She's Pavni uh, and she's from Dehradun. She's 14 years old and uh, she got selected uh, in the uh, as a finalist for the International Glamour Project Miss, Ind Miss Teen India category. And she's one of those who wants to start young. So she wants some advice from you. What is it that you want to tell her? She wants to start young. I give her 100% credit. This is the best, best time. You start young. You learn the ropes. You're going to take the good with the bad, but stick with it because it is wonderful. I mean, I, I was on stage. I'd say they threw me out on stage when I was like two years old. They just kicked me out there. And I learned the hard way, but it's one of the best experiences. I mean, it, in today, if you start young and you keep going, you'd be surprised. I mean, if she's 14, look where she'll be at 18. Look where she'll be at 21. So wow. my hat's off to her that she's starting at this age. I highly encourage that because I wow. started very young. And by starting young, I had no fear of the stage. Okay. Right. And I would, I would tell her that I'm so proud of her because she is taking the first steps into a long and wonderful and prosperous career. So, Pavni, you have your answer there. You have a lot of positivity, a lot of support and encouragement from Angela. She says she's proud of you. In fact, for, for all the people who are in the Miss Teen India category, because in India, Angela, I would like to tell you, the Miss Teen India category has not got the, that kind of exposure. And uh, the International Glamour Project is trying to provide that kind of platform for the teenagers. Uh, we do have well-established uh, Miss and the Mrs. divisions here in India, but it's the Miss team that requires a little bit of help and uh, lots of uh, uh, encouragement and good wishes to the parents who believe that they need to encourage their kids so that they start young. So that, like you said, she's 14 right now, when she'll be 18, when she'll be 21, she'll be a transformed person. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And I mean, the first time she goes out, she may not win, but don't give up. Keep trying because the more you try. And sometimes I've seen this work the opposite way. I've had girls of all different ages have come to me, never did a pageant, never did modeling. They went out there and just had fun with it, but they did so well. They went on the first shot and then they continue. So never give up. Just keep going. Keep doing what you're doing. 
I highly encourage it. I, and I think that's great that you're giving them at that age that opportunity. That's absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a lot of uh, contestants in our pageant who are first timers, who never had any experience in terms of uh, modeling or uh, any, any uh, uh, connection to the fashion industry or the entertainment industry. But they have mustered up the courage and they have enrolled uh, for this pageant and uh, they want to try what are the opportunities that they're going to get? How is it? Are they going to be compared? So what is it that you want to say to all these first timers? Well, what I tell every girl, and I'll tell you a little story on this too. What I tell every girl that's coming into the pageant that's maybe never modeled or that's never pageant, I said, look, you have to start somewhere, okay? this You're opening up a door. You're opening an opportunity. Don't get discouraged. Many, many years ago, I had a girl come to me by the name of Debbie Goldstein. This girl was so frightened that she couldn't even talk to you straight in the face. She would put her head down. Okay, she would okay. shake. Unbelievable. And if you, I knew that we knew that there was possibilities with this particular girl. I mean, she didn't even dress like the other girls. I took her under my wing. She competed okay. the first time in our Mrs. New Jersey Globe 1997 pageant. And she actually won an award. We gave her an award. And I had dress for success and I had people get her a gown. We did her hair. We did her makeup. Well, within one year's time, if you ever saw what this girl did, she competed in pageants. She went out and won pageants, started her own business, and even started her own pageant. Wow. And this, like I said, this was a girl that was so frightened. She would shake even talking to you. But she had the guts to say, I want to do this. I feel that I need this. And not only myself, but several other pageant women took her under her wing. And if you ever saw this woman today, if I showed you a picture of what she looked like when she came to me, of what she looked like today, on a scale from a one to a hundred, she's a hundred. She, and then pageantry just gave her not only the opportunities, but it built her confidence. And, and when the first time she would hold on to me and said, I'm so afraid. I said, don't be afraid. And she actually started to cry. But she thanked me because she said, if I didn't give her that opportunity, she would have never known that she could have gone on to do these things. So I, I tell every girl out there, you might be a little nervous, but don't be. If you find someone that's willing to give you that opportunity, take it, run with it, because you'd be surprised what it's going to do for you. That's lovely. That's a lovely way of looking at it. Uh, did, did you even realize 60 minutes have passed by, Angela? We we had a great one-hour live session. And thank you for all those uh, golden tips that you've given us and the contestants. And I personally, you know, I adore you and I love being mentored by you. So a big, big thank you and a big heart goes out to you from uh, me. And uh, I just... I just uh, uh, hope that uh, this this entire uh, COVID-19 pandemic ends and we're able to get back and uh, I'm able to fly down to US and meet you, our, our meet, which, which was planned in March. Uh, that's still pending. <laughs> yes, and, and, and you know what? It's going to pass. Uh, I believe that the world is uh, totally on the right track right now. And I realize, you know, that things are starting to open up. I mean, we still have to be careful. But you know what? We can still empower each other. We can still do things. Uh, don't let your dreams go. Hold on to your dreams because uh, they always say there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, and I highly believe that. And we're all in this together, but we're going to come through it, and we're going to be successful. So to everybody that was listening today, I love you guys. Akshata, you've been a wonderful and great inspiration to me and all my ladies Thanks. here. And I know we're, between the two of us, we're just going to take it to a, an extremely wonderful level. And in years to come, we're going to look back on this and say, oh, my God, look at all the people that are trying to catch us. Thank you. Before you sign up, do you want to uh, uh, tell all our viewers about the collaboration between Pageant Planet and Miss International World? Oh, yes. Pageant, uh, Pageant Planet is actually... Um, they are a, an online advertising for many different pageants, but we've partnered with them for a scholarship program where this is an opportunity that will, they will feature all the contestants with their pictures and bios and, uh, whoever gets the most votes, okay, will get the people's choice award, but there is a little bit of an opportunity, which 
I uh, will explain more in, in, in an email to you on how sure. that they might be able to get scholarship money and even help with some of their entry fees. But it will give them a chance to get some notoriety. And the one who gets the most vote will actually get the People's Choice Award. And they can put that on their social media. And that's another open door for them in the world of pageantry. Right, right. Thank you. Thank you for this lovely session. I'm so indebted to you for giving our entire, all our viewers, our contestants, this insight into the world of international pageantry. We absolutely love you, Angela. Well, we love you too. And thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. And we hope to do it again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Love you. Uh, lots thank of you. love to your husband, Al. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye, dear.